Hi, so hello, I'm going to show you guys quickly how to fix any vibration issues or if there are any balancing issues, not getting the best experience out of this gimbal. Um, the following steps will sometimes seem very silly and obvious, but it will be great if you just stay solid and go through all these steps because then we can make sure that nothing accidentally happens in between that could actually be very easily solved. And first thing we're going to definitely do is use the most perfectly fully charged batteries and just make sure the battery is full when we insert it into our gimbal. All right, uh, what needs to be mentioned is everything here is exactly how it would come from the Jirion Crane 3S package. Besides that, though, I did purchase a, another own quick release plate, which shouldn't be a big of a difference, and also a cool monitor arm, extension arm, where you can put your external monitor on. This will be crucial just now. And then here we have a classic red camera package. And a lot of the times I see the uh, trouble videos is that the batteries that are attached on the camera are actually, I feel, too heavy. The gimbal can handle a lot, but it's not like you don't have to really push it to the max. So I'm, in my case, I would rather recommend to, if you want to get the best experience out of it, to get a smaller battery for it, which in my case, I would recommend something like this, FX Lion. Um, these batteries, 50 watt, they will hold this camera for almost an hour to shoot. It is a compromise, but to get the better experience, I would highly recommend this. It will be good. And on the other hand, the most important part is to try to have your camera package still stripped down as much as you can. One thing with balancing is the the overall weight, but with the other thing is also the structure of this whole camera package. And as we can see here, this whole camera package is actually not that even. It is not symmetric, it is very weirdly shaped. So I know a lot of people would love to just keep it how it is and just put it on the gimbal and go shoot. But unfortunately, even with the best gimbals, it's not always the case. It's always better to have your camera in a very well-shaped form so that the balancing will go very smoothly. In my case now, um, I did manage to get a method that will be only taking three minutes to get from this handheld mode to this gimbal mode. And I'm gonna show you that very quickly. We can first attach a lens. I have currently a Sigma 18 to 35. And then first thing I'm going to do is definitely strip down the camera package. Up next, I would also highly recommend to get the monitor off because if you have the camera package here and when you balance and accidentally didn't hold it well, it might fall down and then on this side, the screen will hit against this axis and this will actually damage your screen, which is not cool. So in my case, I would also relocate the screen onto this side. The screen I will put on later because first I need to advance the camera package. 
Now in this case, I'm already ready to attach the camera package. This we can see is way more symmetric, has a better shape, so for the balancing will be very easy. Always double check that this one is locked very tight. And then, <clears throat> on this side, it's also good if you have it something like this, then it's not optimal. It's best to have the camera package as condensed as possible. So therefore, as much as we can, we go to this side. And it's also important to note that since we have moved it to this side, later when you pull out the camera, just be careful because it might scratch on this side. All right, now we can start with the balancing. <coughs> so I usually first go for this side. Looks good. This is front heavy. Look backwards. All right. Lock. Then the roll axis. In my case, I guess, because I already balanced it before, it didn't change too much. But for the roll axis, it's good if it stays like this. All right, lastly, the pan axis. This is one of the axes I would say before. I also always believe I got it right, but actually it was one of the main problems why I got the vibration or uh, didn't work perfectly for me for uh, certain modes. So for the pan axis, often what we do is we lean it forward and then tilt it a bit and see. In this case though, I feel sometimes it's not always perfect to spot if you actually balance it perfectly. Uh, there's one trick to do that very clearly, which is you lock the tilt axis and the roll axis. Just really make sure everything is tight. And then you take the gimbal, try to have your hand here also just in case. And have it in under slump mode. Now move it like this and see where it's going. And as we can see here, this is actually not balanced at all. It is lens heavy. So what we need to do is we need to move it more into this direction. This is one of the biggest reasons till now I felt that many problems uh, occurred. So let's see again. Now it's back heavy. Now that is balanced. Perfect. Cool. Okay, now we can actually attach our monitor. And I usually use it this way. Attach it here. And then another very important thing is, if you do plan to have your monitor installed externally, definitely the cable you're going to be using needs to be extremely flexible and lightweight. This goes for any type of gimbals. And in this case, um, for REDS, I would actually recommend to get the adapter and then purchase a very lightweight Limo cable from Freefly Movie Pro. Uh, on my side here, I have a more um, DIY made Limo cable that is also pretty flexible and this will give you a better result. A little bit. So I'm gonna use duct tape to kind of tell the cable its direction. Okay. So now it's better. I definitely would recommend to get a, a longer cable for that. Or you just put the um, adapter onto this side and you're closer to it. But this should work for now. All right, I'm unlocking all the axes. Perfect. All right, 
let's just turn on the gimbal. Okay. So on this side, we can see it works flawlessly. We can see that there are no vibration issues. Here, very close. This is all good. And the only vibration issue that I sometimes encounter is if you put it into underslung mode and start to do an orbiting shot. If you keep a good speed, it will work. But if you do it faster, sometimes there is a little bit of a shake. And the reason is that this mode is not perfect for it. For that, I would go to POV mode. <coughs> Flip it outside, upside down and shoot your orbiting low angle shot like this. And it will work flawlessly. Another two things I would definitely go through is the motor strength and the firmware update. So first off, motor strength it will show you a couple of selections. For the red, I strongly recommend mid-low or low. Because if you have a um, calibration set to a higher, like high or ultra high, I think, if I understand correctly, is that the presets calibration is, has nothing too much to do with the, what is described on there. I would see this more as like preset numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and the number two mid low or number one low is actually totally enough for this type of red camera package. So another thing definitely to do is firmware update. In my case, for example, I need to update it on this one. We go for it, upgrade now. And it says you need to connect to it, so I will just connect now, connect. And don't press enter now, press upgrade now. Upgrade. Now the motors will go limp. And we'll just wait for it to um, install the newest firmware. And then it should work, just like actually how I demonstrated before. I think most of the important part is definitely check thoroughly on the pan axis if it's balanced and also have your camera package uh, stripped down in a way that you don't compromise on image quality but um, in a better way that you can balance it to get a better experience out of it and that's basically it hopefully it helps you